Ladies and gentlemen, we're training legs today with the master Ben Pokolski. We haven't trained with him since what, 2019? I got you. Uh, yeah, come on. He has tons of knowledge, tons of information. We're gonna do a full leg workout. It's August 17th, 7.30 in the morning. So in three days, T minus three days, I will no longer be 16 year old Tristan Lee and now I'm going into my 20s, which is absolutely ridiculous considering I look like I'm 12. So before we get into the workout, we've got to take our pre-workout. I have to prepare for this leg day. Hopefully Ben is able to give us some interesting tidbits. And I think we're gonna combine these two together, the peach rings and the tiger's blood. You guys have been messaging, saying that it's quite enjoyable to combine the two, so. Then we're gonna get into this workout. Let's do it. You feel your hamstrings well through the whole range? Yeah. Don't move your arm for a sec. Grab the end of the bench and like pull it down. So you're engaging this. Now brace your abs. Yep. Excellent. So you're basically just trying to peak contract so you can do a bicep contraction, right? You get to the top and just like squeeze as hard as you can. Squeeze and just hold. And try to relax the feet, relax the calves. Just really try to almost getting into cramp. So you're going to, like you don't want to go to fatigue. So you're feeling it activate without exhaustion. If you induce fatigue in your warm ups, yeah. you'll take away your ability to do the work later. So try to like three or four reps, same weight, and just like spend five to six seconds at the top of every rep. Just just play with it and see, because like if you induce fatigue, you're gonna you're gonna take away that top gear, right? So minimize how much fatigue you induce. Just try it with just doing a few reps, longer holds. Holds. Yep. Yeah, and then just once you feel like it's kind of warmed up, stop and go heavier. Ten out of ten, ten out of ten, ten out of ten, done. That's it. Uh, if your goal is getting bigger, you want to have that peak set, those top sets being like all out. The heaviest load, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many working sets do you do? A lot. A lot? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so it depends on your body type, but like, if you find an exercise you do really well, yeah. that's how I progress. Like, I'll do, let's say, you know, week one I'll do four, week two I'll do five, week three I'll do six, week five I'll, you know, like, I'll just keep progressing up. I may do ten sets in the same You'd exercise. Rather. You don't need to have multiple exercises. So the reason that the mindset of multiple exercises came in is because most of them are shit. Yeah. So if you think of like exercises back in the day, they're just so, if it's a shit resistance profile, I'm only getting challenged in this part of the range, I need another one for this part of the range, another one for this part of the range. So you find one that actually works, you just load it. And curl it. Just try one more yeah, like yeah. with light rep, light, light weight. Right there. So there's something I want to do to fuck you up. try to get as much work as we possibly can on the young ones up. So you're putting on super lightweight and I'm giving you like almost an isometric at the bottom and then I'm letting you release it. So it's not isometric, I'm not stopping you, but I may give you a, you're pushing as hard as you possibly can. Last one. Strong. Hold. Slide down slow, down slow, down slow, down slow. We got three more eccentrics, let's go. Up, hold, stay there, stay there. Don't let it down. Pull it back up to the top. Pull it back up to the top. One more. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on, brother. Strong. Yeah. You got one more in there. Let's go. Hup. Girl. Stay. Good. Yeah. Nice. 
volume will contract exactly as much as it needs to to overcome the inertial properties, right? So if I push it and almost make it immovable, well, you have to contract 100%. Once you start contracting 100%, I let it go. Right. So I'm trying to make you use all the muscle fibers. Have you ever done this for hams? I've done it, but not like. But not like, uh, so not like straight flusher. So ideally you want your knees kind of up on top of that pad. Like here? Yeah, so if your knees are behind, you can do it, but it'll make it easier. How far down? Um, so just the straight knees. So the body stays braced. So before you even go, brace down your abs. And I extend the knees out this way. Okay, just keep going, I got you. Straight knees as much as you can, straight a bit more. Good, now curl back up. Yep. Went pretty hard on that, so you know your performance is going to be shit here. So you, you got to decide which one do you want it to be your primary workhorse, you know. So our job, if we want to build muscles, we got to get better at not shortening the rep and getting strong with those extremes, you know. I think that's the biggest opportunity that exists in muscle building is like the first inch. The more tight your abs are, the more you can use those hamstrings. Okay, we got it. You got to stay strong. It's in your head. Drive the knees down hard. Drive the heels back hard. Let's go. Again. <coughs> Oh, that little extra half inch is death. Oh, looks like that. So much easier to cheat other exercises. This one, like, you literally can't cheat it. You just die. <laughs> What we do, isolated, yeah. builds muscle, also creates dysfunction. Because yeah. muscles aren't meant to work in isolation, right? right? Yeah. So you have to integrate a degree of the functional stuff for the, for the complex movements. Pushing my hand, go hip flexor stuff, yeah. try. I'm trying to find that at the bottom, right? So I want to find this. So I don't want to lose it because I'll go into this position. I just want to find that contraction hip flexor. Bands as far as the high school goes. I think they're useful, man, but most people use them 
the wrong way. They're going to make it easier. The goal isn't to make it easier. The goal is easier to make it harder. So obviously they take weight off at the bottom and make it heavier. Potentially the opportunity to make it heavier at the top, which as far as the resistance profile goes is a good idea. People don't understand it. So I prefer to use the bands from the bottom because we spoke about the value in eccentric loading when you have the, the capacity to recover from it. Yeah. So if we put a band from the bottom to the top, it's pulling us down. So we have to slow it down. Yeah. So it's, it's stopping us from exploding up, which is preventing inertia. And then it's forcing us to slow it down. So if we're going to use a band on this in the off season, we use the bottom. Right. Yeah, if you want to think of like what actual muscular stimulus you're eliciting, you definitely don't want, I say you don't want a band. I'm not against it, but I think it's more useful than the bottom. Yeah. Which we might. I just want to see how you do it. Yeah. No, I agree. So we finished the workout. We did a lot more volume than I normally do, but I had to because Ben was here. He literally performed a full on exorcism on the hack squat. Make sure you guys check out all of Ben's socials. I'll leave all this up in the description down below. He posts tons of tips. I'm super grateful I'm able to train here up here because there's so many people just like Ben. And Ben is willing to take the time to train with me and teach me. It's been what, three or four years since the last time we trained like together. So it was good to get it in and uh, hopefully when you're down in the States as well, when you're down in Florida, we'll get a chance to train at uh, MI40, which is the gym you're co-owner of. Yep. Yep, co-owner of MI40. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.